We are starting off with Raw, and last week, Dominic Mysterio made his feelings, or lack thereof, clear on Liv Morgan, leaving the champion in tears, much to the delight of his mommy, Rhea Ripley. This week, Morgan entered Judgment Day's clubhouse and completely trashed it, leaving everybody perplexed as she made sure to leave one member's personal items unharmed. Now there's no question as to why she did what she did, as she had been scorned by Dominic, but the only member who didn't get crossed out was Finn Balor. While Balor's items were left unharmed, the trashed clubhouse featured big X's spray-painted over the place, including over a drawing of the faction. It's interesting that Balor avoided Liv's wrath this week, as this follows a trend of behavior between the two that fans may have already spotted. Months ago, Liv was seen exiting a car in the parking lot, and Balor was seen leaving the same vehicle, which fueled speculation that the pair may be close. Then there was a more recent incident as when Liv Morgan left her hotel room keycard, seemingly for Dominic, it was Balor who pocketed it instead. This week's actions have continued to fuel speculation that Balor could be a part of a twist that helps Liv Morgan retain at SummerSlam 2024 against Rhea Ripley this Saturday. On Raw, the Women's World Champion went on to burn photos of Dominic Mysterio, stating that he isn't a man, he's Rhea's little b While standing over a barrel full of flames, Liv Morgan made it clear to the camera that she intends to leave SummerSlam as Women's World Champion. With that said, it's clear that she's still reeling from Dominic's comments, and what do you make of this? Do you predict Balor will cost Rhea the title match in Cleveland? Let us know below. Clearly, there's a lot of speculation going into this weekend's women's world title match, but a massive botch on Raw may have given the result of the match away. During the show, Rhea Ripley cut a promo on Liv Morgan, and a graphic showing Ripley as the women's world champion was briefly aired on the broadcast. This has led many to believe that this is a graphic WWE had intended to save for next week, effectively spoiling that Ripley will win at SummerSlam. With that said, we can't rule out that this was a previously used graphic and not one made for the post-SummerSlam Raw, but if so, that doesn't explain why it appeared this week. Ripley is fighting to regain the title she never lost this weekend, and we'll have to see if this major botch on Raw is a literal sign of things to come. Damian Priest is facing the toughest challenge of his title reign as Gunter is set to face him for the World Heavyweight Championship in what's become a deeply personal feud. To weaken the ring general, Finn Balor was set to face him in a singles match tonight on Raw, and before the match, Balor made it clear to Priest and Ripley he didn't want any help. Throughout the match, Finn brought the fight to the ring general, but in the end, Gunter choked Balor out in the ring, and the referee had to stop the match. Once the match was over, Gunter continued to choke out Balor until Priest came out and brawled with him in a precursor to what fans will see this Saturday. Damien brutalized the King of the Ring to the point where he was trying to evade him by going through the crowd as the show came to an exciting, albeit sudden, close. Once again, Raw suddenly got cut off without a proper ending to their final segment, which has been an issue the Red Brand has been facing for the past few months. This week, the feed cut off just as it looked like their brawl was just getting started, infuriating fans watching at home. After the show went off the air, Gunter was destroyed by Priest, as the World Heavyweight Champion slammed his adversary on the announce table, but fans at home didn't see it. This earned a massive ovation from the St. Paul crowd, and while Gunter and Priest will wage war this Saturday, fans can only hope they get to see all of it after this week's Raw. While Chad Gable and the Creed Brothers may be a match made in heaven, their first victory as a unit turned into a night of terror this week on Raw, thanks to the Wyatt Six. The Creeds, accompanied by Gable, were scheduled to battle the Alpha Academy, Otis, and Akira Tozawa, and despite Otis gaining momentum mid-match, it was the Creeds who won. The trio continued to assault Otis after the match was over, despite Maxine Dupree slapping Chad Gable and coming to Otis's aid, and for a moment, it appeared Chad would hurt Maxine. Before that happened, the lights went out, and the male members of the Wyatt Six came down to the ring to confront the Creed brothers and Chad Gable. As they stood on the ring apron, the three men removed their masks, revealing themselves as Eric Rowan, Dexter Loomis, and Joe Gacy, and Chad went to leave and ate a crossbody. That was done by the faction's female member, revealed to be Nikki Cross, while the other Wyatt Six members destroyed the Creed brothers one by one. Interestingly, Michael Cole referred to Cross as Sister Abigail during the show, but when the segment was shared on social media, that piece of the commentary was removed. 
The fact it's been edited out suggests that Cross isn't Sister Abigail, and that WWE doesn't want fans to think she is, raising questions as to whether there will be someone who is that persona. As Chad Gable escaped to the stage thinking he was at safety, the demonic Uncle Howdy was seen coming right behind him, scaring Gable as the segment ended with eerie laughter. Later in the night, much like each week, another VHS tape was played, this time focusing on Dexter Loomis, the man behind the Mercy the Buzzard character of the Wyatt Six. This video showed him in a dark place with a voice reminding him of how he's developed under the guidance of the Wyatt Six and had a simple message for enemies. Run. After the video, Gable and the Creeds were spotted backstage with Raw GM Adam Pierce, and Gable demanded a six man tag team match with the faction. Pierce made the match official for next week's post SummerSlam Raw, setting the stage for the Wyatt Six's official in ring debut as a unit. What are your thoughts on Wyatt Six against Chad Gable and the Creed Brothers next week on Raw? Should this have been saved for SummerSlam? Sound off in the comments. Later in the show, Dakota Kai was part of a backstage segment with Damage Control in which she challenged Sonya Deville to a match, but fans were distracted by what was in the background. As Kai spoke, fans noticed that the Pluto symbol, the established symbol of the Wyatt Six, near her head, and could Nikki Cross get involved in next week's match? Only time will tell. Seth Rollins opened up this week's Raw and wasted no time in calling out the men he'll officiate at SummerSlam, those being CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. It was emphasized that Punk and McIntyre are prohibited from any physical contact until SummerSlam or their match will be cancelled, which neither man wants to see. Punk left the ring, stating that Rollins does not get to make the rules, but Seth, who was fittingly wearing a black and white striped outfit, demanded Punk return to the ring. Capitalizing, Drew McIntyre tried to align with Seth, arguing that Punk is evidently the true adversary, and Rollins acknowledged that Punk can be hated. Unfortunately for McIntyre and his dreams of a partnership, Seth reminded him that he hates the Scottish Warrior as well, showing there will be no favoritism this weekend. Rollins then detailed the rules for their upcoming match at SummerSlam, which he referred to as a violent masterpiece, and called himself the boss and the law. Seth's one rule is that both competitors must listen to him, and he will control the count and call for submissions only as he sees fit. Rollins mentioned he could count to 10, 20, or even a million in a countout situation, and disqualifications will be at his discretion and is eager to flex his power in the match. Punk said he hopes Rollins is a better referee than a dresser, and said he wouldn't want Seth's help anyway, and the only side the special guest referee will be on is his own side. It remains to be seen how Seth Rollins will influence the match between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, but this setup adds an interesting dynamic leading up to SummerSlam. But what are you expecting from this unique match in Cleveland, and how would you book the finish of the bout? Share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Last week, Drew McIntyre shared a photo with AEW TNT champion Jack Perry, who, like McIntyre himself, has had his own share of issues with the best in the world, CM Punk. That picture was later deleted, but not before fans shared it countless times on social media, and though gone, the photo did get referenced during this week's Raw. As McIntyre made his way to the ring for a segment with CM Punk and Seth Rollins, Michael Cole brought up the photo when he said, Drew McIntyre was stirring things up this week, bringing up things from CM Punk's past. Now, WWE typically opts to avoid referencing AEW, even tangentially like this image, and this surprising line did not go unnoticed by fans watching the show at home. McIntyre and Punk have been at odds pretty much since the latter's return to WWE last year, and expect an all-out war this weekend at SummerSlam, with Seth Rollins right in the middle. Over the past week, a lot was said about CM Punk's WWE contract, which is set to expire in November 2026, though the two sides are said to already be in talks about a new deal. In the past, we've seen contracts extended to make up for a time a wrestler has been out injured, and the majority of Punk's return to WWE so far has seen him, unfortunately, on the shelf. While speaking on Fightful Select's backstage report, Sean Ross Sapp was asked whether WWE tacked on additional time to CM Punk's contract due to his in-ring hiatus. Sapp noted that sources close to CM Punk have emphasized that he hasn't ceased working despite not being actively involved in wrestling, and he's continued to contribute on screen. 
From being part of storylines to commentary and even hosting events, Punk has maintained an active role on WWE TV and has provided value through different avenues despite his injury. With that in mind, it's unclear whether WWE would tack on extra time to Punk's current deal due to an injury, though it's also been reported that Punk plans to stay with WWE for a very long time. The return of CM Punk is something fans thought they'd never see, and now that he's back, we'll have to see what a future contract looks like for the former WWE and AEW World Champion. In singles action, Bronson Reed defeated Sheamus in a rematch from a few weeks back, capitalizing on late interference from Pete Dunne and delivering the tsunami for a win. This was a good physical match as expected given the names involved, which showed why they can consistently be counted on to deliver as workhorses of the brand. Reed scoring a win is a big deal because he has lacked those defining victories, while Sheamus losing the way he did only puts him one step closer to a showdown with Dunn. That should be a show-stealing match on any card lucky enough to have it, but now it remains to be seen when this match will take place. It was recently announced that Pat McAfee will return to college game day once the college football season starts once more on August 24th. This led many to speculate that Pat would once more have to take a hiatus from WWE commentary, but Fightful Select reports that this is not the case at all. As of right now, McAfee is still going to be doing raw commentary on top of his college game day work, so fans can still expect to hear from the popular announcer each week. More from Raw, as before the show started, the crowd in St. Paul, Minnesota saw the return of a superstar who had been out for quite some time with an injury. Before the show began, Cruz Del Toro was spotted in St. Paul, and during the tapings for WWE main event, Del Toro made his return to the ring. Del Toro, who's been out since WrestleMania with an injury, teamed with LWO ally Joaquin Wilde to face the Authors of Pain from the Final Testament. The other match for WWE main event saw Isla Dawn take on Ivy Nile, and after last competing in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, it's great to see Cruz Del Toro back in the ring. As we mentioned, this week's episode of Monday Night Raw took place in St. Paul, Minnesota, so it was fitting that one of the biggest names from wrestling and Minnesota was at the show. On Twitter, WWE shared a video of Triple H welcoming former Minnesota Governor Jesse the Body Ventura with the message, Welcome Home. Jesse has had an often strained relationship with WWE, but was welcomed with open arms this week, and perhaps we'll see more of him with the company after the homecoming at Raw. Since the early days of AEW, Penta has been a big part of the company, but now his tenure with the promotion could be coming to an end. Fightful Select reports that Penta's AEW contract is set to expire this year, and WWE has shown interest in him, and the same is true with Ray Phoenix, whose contract will also expire this year. The exact expiration dates for their contracts have not been nailed down yet, but it's added that AEW wants to retain Phoenix and Penta, and there have been offers extended and contract talks. There is no current word about how those talks have been, but it's expected that WWE is interested in Phoenix, just like they are Penta. Both men have been with AEW since 2019, and are former World Tag Champions and Trios Champions with Death Triangle Ally Pack, and Ray is a former International Champion. As for Penta, we'll have to see what happens with him, as he could be a big get for WWE, and could become a bigger name with WWE's backing and exposure. That mask could also be a very marketable aspect of his character as we've seen with Rey Mysterio, so it's hardly a surprise WWE has its eyes on the very talented wrestler. But what do you think? Should Penta join WWE when the time is right? And if so, should Rey Phoenix join him? Share your thoughts down in the comments. It was in December that Charlotte Flair suffered an injury that has kept her off of WWE TV ever since, and the Queen was forced to miss the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 40. The former women's champion has shown remarkable progress in her rehabilitation and has taken to social media to share a huge update on her recovery. In one of her Instagram stories, Charlotte can be seen training in the ring at the WWE Performance Center and is decked in her CF wrestling boots but still sporting a knee brace. Flair tosses the trainer back and forth between the ropes before doing some running drills of her own and we now know more about Charlotte's exact injury. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reports that Flair tore three ligaments in her knee about eight months ago and that there are often unrealistic expectations on pro wrestlers with severe knee injuries. With that in mind, and given the seriousness of her injury, it's anticipated she may be out for an additional two to three months, despite rumors of a SummerSlam return. 
In the meantime, Charlotte is starring in a horror thriller movie called You Lose, You Die, so fans can look forward to that when she remains absent from in-ring competition. Flair has been one of WWE's top women for years, and it remains to be seen what will be done with her as anticipation grows towards her eventual in-ring comeback. We've got some unfortunate news now as Joseph Connors, who was part of the NXT UK brand, was recently involved in a car accident that could have had tragic consequences. Connors took to Instagram to share a powerful message about the life-saving role of seatbelts and shared that all four occupants of the vehicle were wearing their seatbelts. The deployment of airbags played a crucial role in saving their lives as well, and Connors urged everyone to prioritize safety for themselves and their passengers. According to Connors, he and three friends were returning from an event when another driver, suspected of being under the influence, collided with their vehicle and then fled the scene. Connors added that he wanted to address the matter after a member of the public witnessed the incident and recognized him as a wrestler who had performed with WWE. In the post, Connors shared that he wasn't seeking sympathy, and in a separate post of her own, UK wrestler Ashley Vega shared that she too had been part of the accident. Like Connors, Vega reminded fans about the importance of wearing a seatbelt and shared a photo of the bruises left from the impact of the crash, but made clear it could have been far worse. We're relieved to hear that Connors, Vega, and the other passengers in the car survived this crash, and this should serve as a vital reminder to always be safe when on the road. On Raw, Carlito would face Jey Uso and come up short against the main event superstar, but this was just a part of what would be a bad night for the faction. Shortly after, Dominic Mysterio was given the task of taking care of Sami Zayn, but Mysterio would lose by DQ after JD McDonough and Carlito ambushed the Intercontinental Champion. Jay would then make the save and level McDonough with a spear before sending Dominic flying over the top rope, followed by a big splash by Jay. As Sami looked at the chaos at ringside though, he was ambushed from behind by Braun Breaker, the man who will challenge Sami for the Intercontinental title at SummerSlam. When Breaker went for a spear, Sammy countered with a big boot before hitting an exploder into the corner, though Braun dodged a halluva kick by the champion. Breaker tried a second sneak attack when Zayn's back was turned, but was thwarted again by Sammy, who sent him out of the ring, as momentum is on the champion's side. It was the halluva kick that saw Sammy retain against Braun Breaker at Money in the Bank in Toronto, and we'll have to see if lightning strikes twice this weekend. More from SummerSlam now as this week's show will take place in Cleveland, and on Raw, it was confirmed that The Miz will be the host of the event in his hometown. This comes after The Awesome Truth said they wanted to regain their world tag team titles at SummerSlam, but that seemingly will not be happening this weekend. As of right now, the world tag team titles will not be on the line at SummerSlam, while the WWE tag team titles will be up for grabs on the SmackDown before SummerSlam. The Miz has hosting experience, as he did the duty at WrestleMania 39, but after losing two matches on that night, he'll be hoping for a much better time at the biggest party of the summer. Lyra Valkyria, Katana Chance, and Caden Carter battled Sonya Deville, Zoe Stark, and Shayna Baszler in six-woman tag team action, and the heels isolated the Valkyrie for much of the match. Valkyria was able to fend them off and made the tag to Carter, and the action broke down from there with the faces mounting a comeback and appears poised to score the win. An alert to Ville broke up the after party by chance, and Stark put her away with a Z360 for the win, and the group had an altercation with Damage Control after the match. This bizarrely felt like Damage Control were baby faces as they took it to the heel faction, despite the trio of Kai, Sane, and Io having done nothing to warrant the cheers of the fans. Nevertheless, Damage Control cleared the ring of the babyfaces before standing tall to close things out, and once again, we couldn't help but notice Lyra Valkyria's standing. The former NXT Women's Champion and Queen of the Ring runner-up does not feel nearly as important as she did two months ago, a blight for somebody who has beaten Becky Lynch. With that said, Valkyria continues to enjoy consistent TV time and is being kept relevant in the eyes of fans, but she remains something of a third wheel aligning with Chance and Carter. Karrion Cross continued to try and recruit Xavier Woods to the Final Testament this week, following a long process of trying to draw a wedge between Woods and Kofi Kingston. On Raw, Cross claimed that Kofi had not re-injured his shoulder in Japan as WWE reported, but he'd skipped town since the spotlight was on Woods for a change. Cross gave the tag team veteran one last chance to join the Final Testament, but he attacked Cross, 
and the match began with Woods holding nothing back. Akam tried to interfere in the match but was taken out by Woods. He even took out Rezar, but that wasn't enough as Cross hit the final prayer for the win.